Did you steal any of your grandkids' arm. stuffed animals? Yeah, I've, I've been using my arm. You know. Your arm, okay. You don't, you don't have a lion that you can practice with? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to use him again tonight for um, uh, some additional words. Uh, body parts, legs, skin, nose, mouth, that sort of thing. Okay. I was the um, chorus librarian for San Francisco Symphony Chorus, uh, responsible for language. So I had to produce the, the language materials that they would sing from. Oh, and so like they were singing Latin or German or Italian? Latin or German or French. We did very little Italian, lots of Russian. Ah. Uh, yeah, so I was responsible for all of that, which was great fun. I really loved it. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. You, didn't, you didn't tell me we had a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if we can, you can tell me the prepositions. Let's see if I can get Oh, God, there, there you go. So... Uh, if you are um, in front of the lion, not necessarily look at him, but you're just in front of the lion, what is it? Pro. Pro. Yep, yep. And if uh, if you're sitting on top of the lion? Epi. Epi, very good. Oh. And uh, if you are going into the lion? Um, ice. Ice, very good. Ice, okay. And if you're inside the lion? In, and right, yep. And if he throws up and goes blech, you are ek. Apo. Ek. 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 No, ek. Ek. <laughs> after he throws you up, then you run away. Then it's <laughs> apo. <laughs> yeah. And how about uh, above? A uh, hooper. Hooper, yes. And below? Hypo. Oh. Hypo, yes. Oh, hypo. Hupo. Very good. And what if I'm face to face, nose to nose with him? Pros. Pros. Notice I said pros, and that's, I'm falling back to my old way of learning the Greek. It's really uh, pros. pros. It's, it's pros. a soft O, pros. but, you know, pros. It, you know, we're going to use long O's on occasion. <laughs> so uh, um, I will be slipping. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, no. Yes, Pat. The, the word for up, up. would that also apply Anna. to going up a mountain? Yeah, Anna. Uh huh. Anna, so that's up a mountain because I was trying to visualize things that would happen biblically up right. a mountain. Oh, yeah. Or uh, Hooper, you know, maybe the, the angels are hovering over. Right, uh, like at the, um, uh, the, uh, the with the uh, shepherds guarding their fleet of fleek. Their fleek. <laughs> their fleek. Yeah, their, their flock by night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so this is going to be a whole series of nouns grouped again uh, by type. And uh, by doing this, it helps anchor a lot of these words in your mind because they're of the same family. Um, so a root is like Nike or Nick uh, for victory. So I'm, I'm wearing Nike shoes. Well, Nike was a, a winged goddess of uh, victory. Wing goddess of victory, uh, Nike, um, or Nick, Nikki. Uh, Nikao uh, is a verb, and this is an ao. Verbs, uh, we'll get to this when we get to verbs. Verbs are ao, eto, ito, or oo. And uh, so if you see these kind of uh, combinations at the end with a long omega at the end, that's first person uh, verb. We'll get into that later, but anyhow, that's a clue that you've got a verb. Here you've just got a feminine ending, which is a clue that it's a noun. So this is, this is a victory. Uh, this is, I'm gaining the victory. And uh, Nike Laos, uh, Laos, from which we get the word laity, uh, people, uh, victory of the people. Um, and it became just a name Nicholas, um, and then uh, Nicodemus, who saw Jesus in John chapter 3, uh, Nick, victory, demo for, uh, democ uh, for um, uh, people, and it's where we get the word democracy, rule by the people, demo people, 
uh, Kratik uh, is uh, rule. And it's just the name Nicodemus. So uh, when you're looking at Greek words, uh, start trying to see if you can figure out where the root is. And so here the root in all four of these words is Nick. Uh, that you'll have, as I say up here, there'll be numerous endings, especially on verbs and on nouns. And you just you say, where's the root? And if you've got the root, then when you're putting together your wooden translation, um, you're halfway home. Uh, while we're on names, uh, Timothy, Paul's companion, uh, is Timeo, uh, Theos. So tomeo eo is a is a verb. So I honor, and theos is the generic for God. I honor God. Timothy. There's words that we can figure out what they mean because they're church. They're part of our church vocabulary. Um, so baptizo uh, just came right into English as baptize or baptism. Uh, it's got an o. Mega on the end of it, so that's a verb. It says, I baptize. The root word has the sense of being overwhelmed. So if I have a baptism of fire, it means I'm overwhelmed by fire. Uh, if I'm baptized into God's Holy Spirit, I'm overwhelmed by His Spirit. So, um, exactly. So it has a sense, uh, we translate it as immerse, but it might be better like being thrown into the surf on the, on the seashore. It's got that overwhelming sense or being thrown into a snowbank uh, up in the mountains. Uh, you're, com you're, you're completely overwhelmed by the snow, overwhelmed by the fire, overwhelmed by the water. Um, and so it has that, that sense. Uh, and because it was not translated that way into English, it just came right in because of the churches. Um, uh, then it becomes a theological word. And then you, uh, the meaning of it depends on which, which branch of Christianity you're involved mm -hmm. with. But the, the, the root word has this sense of being overwhelmed. There are other words for meaning to be dipped and in other words for being uh, to wash. This one is more like I'm picking you up bodily and I'm heaving you into a snowbank. You know? <laughs> uh, Karis and Karin, uh, they don't look anything like the word grace, but if you hear it, Karis, uh, you can see that grace kind of just flowed from that. Uh, you bend your tongue a few places, go through. 10 different countries until you get to England and it comes out as grace. But uh, caris. Um, kara, by the way, means joy. Uh, so you'll uh, see uh, those words often, maybe even in the same verse, uh, grace and joy. Uh, one word that did make it into uh, English is charismata. Charis, meaning a grace. And I don't know what mata means, but just thrown together is it's an undeserved gift. It's a grace gift. And we made it into English as charisma. You know, some like a politician who just has, is able just to wow the people. And charismatic, uh, like the uh, Pentecostals. Doxa or doxas is where we get the word doxology. And doxa is just simply means glory. Uh, doxus, here's an os, so this tells you it's a noun. Uh, so doxology are words, logos, words about glory. And uh, we have, in the old, old days, uh, one of the churches I attended, we'd sing the doxology every Sunday as we were ending. Amen. Yeah, so it's, it's just, it's so we were saying uh, things about the glory of God. I've been here before with the word you. Who can tell me what you means? Good. 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 Caris means? Grace. Right. So you, Caristo, 
means good grace in its root form, a wooden form. Uh, it might be translated as giving thanks or thanksgiving, or it can even mean thank you. And it made it into English as the Eucharist. Okay. You means? Good. Good. Ankalos means? Messenger. Right. And an angaleon is what a messenger brings. So good message. And the U became a V, and we get evangelism off of this word. But it just means good message. And that's why the um, uh, there was a translation of the Bible uh paperback that was very popular in the 1970s called the good news bible yeah it came right from this it's this good message mm -hmm. question yes is it really written with a double g yes but it doesn't have an n in it so when you see the greek uh, uh you won't have an n it'll be alpha gamma gamma and when you see the two gammas mm -hmm. together that's to tell you, make it a nasal sound, ung, so ungalian. So uh, when we are uh, putting it into English, uh, we have to insert the N there because uh, uh, there's no other clue in English that that's what we're trying to say. Thank you, Harry. That confused me for many years. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I'd see that. I see that GG, but there was the N, N sound, and I didn't get it. The two Gs together changed yeah, the two, things. Yes, the yeah. two Gs together will make that <clears throat> sound. Yeah. Um, and so to help us uh, learn the word, I put the, uh, the letter N in there, the Euangelion. Good question. Uh, laos, where we get laity. Os is, makes it what kind of word? That's a noun? It's a noun. And Laos just means a, a, a grouping of people, not a very large group, but a grouping of people, maybe enough to fit within a theater or within a church building or within a, a, a square, a, a town square. Um, I uh, will put hyphens here to show you where the syllable breaks are. This one, uh, I don't know what the roots are. Uh, but it is Marturia, and the U became a Y, and it made it into English as Martyr. Um, I don't know the roots for Mar or for Tour, but Marturia, uh, and that gets translated as a witness. So we're to be a witness. Uh, the New Testament calls us a lot, and uh, if you're uh, if you're translated directly and you put the word Martyr. People go, well, why should it be? I, what's this martyr business? <laughs> you know? And so you have to say, well, the word means to witness. I'm, I'm being persecuted because I'm what I'm saying. I'm witnessing to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, exactly, Harry. And uh, so that's what uh, to be a, to martyria is. I'm uh, talking about something that might not be politically correct. <laughs> like, Jesus is risen from the dead. Oh, get that guy! Yeah, right. And then I become a martyr, or I become a witness. That's true. Uh, another word uh, that I, I don't know the roots for, pasca. Pasca. The K-H is way back here in the throat. <laughs> pasca. Uh, it's where we get the word paschal, uh for our Passover, we talk about the Paschal lamb. Right. And, and it's just, uh, it's a, a, a pointer back to Passover. Uh, but this, this one, Martyria and Pashka are words that you just have to wind up memorizing. Um, yeah. I, I can't help you with, with uh, little tricky uh, yeah. memory tips. It be, you can uh, look up uh, etymology. And it'll tell you where these words came from all the way back to Sanskrit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, some words you can. So, for instance, I use uh, the uh, Oxford uh, English Dictionary to do that online, and you can just Google it. And sometimes it it just says uh, Greek word pashka, you know, or it's like, well, that's not very helpful. <laughs> you know? I, I go to 
Etym Online. And oh. the only thing it gives you is etymology. Now the next set is places, things that you could go to or um, dig up or go see. These are, uh, these are um, where before we had people, this is places. Um, anyone remember what the word was for a king? Basilos. Basilos, yes. And so a kingdom is a basilia. Uh, when I was learning uh, Greek, this I would get the two mixed up because they're not, you know, it's uh, basilius doesn't have an os ending. And I'm going, ah, hmm. And uh, so I'm sure I lost some points on my exam papers when I got these two mixed up. But basilia, a kingdom. Hades, uh, uh, we often uh, equate it in our translations as hell. Uh, but this was really the Greek god of the underworld, and it later came to mean hell as a place. Um, and so if you were going into archaic Greek, Hades would be talking about the god. If would they have, sorry, would they have said Hades or something? Hades? Yes. Yes, thank you. It would be a soft day. Was I saying Hades? Yeah. yeah, well, that's the only way I ever heard it. Yeah. There we go. I'm slipping again. So, Decapolis is uh, another place. It's the region on the uh, eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. It was where the Gentiles uh, lived. And uh, when Antiochus uh, Epiphanes was in charge of Syria, uh, this was an area that was really close closer to home. And so he colonized this side of the, of the, uh, the sea, and, um, and it became known as the Decapolis when it got to, into um, the Roman era, because there are Deca, 10, Paulus, cities, 10 cities. But it's not a Roman word, it's a Greek word. De, deca, dec, ten, polis, uh, a, a grouping of people or a city. Where we get the word political and where we get the word decimal. This word made it right into English, cosmos. Um, you think of cosmology or cosmopolitan. Uh, it's, it's uh, the world or every, the universe or all the starry heavens. It's um, in John 3.16, it said, for God so loved the cosmos. Uh, it's, the, it's everything that is that he sent his only begotten son. And he uses the word cosmos. And, and we tend to translate that as world. Um, because it really was the idea of, well, uh, if I'm going to uh, be um, talking about the Mediterranean area and I'm cosmopolitan, polis, there's the pol root word for polis, uh, the city, cosmos, the world. So it's the world of the city. It's all the urban, urban people. Um, cosmetics. So if you're going to go out on the night, you need to, you know, put the... Uh, dark black on your eyebrows and I don't know whatever else the Egyptians did. <laughs> you know? And so cosmetics, cosmology, cosmopolitan, cosmos, world or worldly. Another polis word is necro, uh, where it, uh, you probably have heard of necrophiliac, someone who loves the dead. Um, or um, a ne pardon me, and a necropolis is a city of the dead. And we would translate it as a cemetery. And people would visit it often. And if you were a, a Jewish, you would tend to uh, put a stone on the, on the memorial stone of the, of the grave to say that you had visited. So it's very quiet, very peaceful. And um, uh, if you ever go to a Jewish cemetery and you find all these little stones or pebbles, uh, it's not because someone was just messing up with the grave. It's each pebble means a person visited there. And so you leave them, you don't, you don't brush them off.
that was that was a freebie. Okay, polis is uh, from the word poly, p o l y, uh, which means many. I should have asked you that question. What does poly mean? Many. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So polis <laughs> is is many in a particular location. And, and so it's, it gets translated as a city. Uh, it doesn't tell you how big the city is. It could be a small city, uh, a large city. You don't know. It just means uh, a, 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 a city of some sort. Uh, for instance, it made it into English as metropolis. Okay. Anyone here who knows the ancient Rome or ancient Latin will probably shoot me, but this one is how it looks in Greek. It's an omega and an eta, so it's Romi. Uh, Romi is Rome, but if you're talking about the Roman people, then it's uh, OU has a, means the word of, so of Romeo, you know. Kind of say it like Luigi, kind of roll it off your tongue. Romeo. <laughs> and I can imagine a lot of these words, uh, I'm saying it with an American accent, but you can imagine that there was uh, inflections as people would talk and you, they'd be a dead giveaway. Oh, you're from Italy or, oh, you're from Turkey, you know, even though they would be speaking the same uh, words. Uh, on, a place that made it in English, a theatron or theater, literally a theater. This would often be an outdoor, um, a semi-circular amphitheater. Um, and it appears only in one place. It's in the book of Acts. A question on this. The word thea um, is the Greek way of saying goddess, I think. Okay, like theos? Yes. Okay. Uh, tapas is uh, just merely a place. It could also be a room, but it made it into English as topology. And these are words I didn't learn until I got to college. And I said, I want to go look for mines in the Southwest, uh, abandoned mines. And they said, oh, you need a topographic map. And I said, what's that? It's a graphical picture of the elevations uh, shown as lines at 50 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet, and it just keeps on going. And so you can visualize mountain peaks on a flat piece of paper. And uh, so that's the graphic part. And tapas means, tapas means place. So I would get a topographic map of uh, Silver City in New Mexico and go look for abandoned mines. Tapas. Okay, so uh, uh, Basilea, Hades, or if you slip and say Hades, that's okay. Decapolis, Cosmos, Necropolis, just polis by itself. Romi and Romayu, uh, Theatron and Tapas. So these are some places that you'll see in the Bible. I had mentioned about Anna. Anna means what? Up. Up. up Pat said up. And uh, if something is static, it is doing what? Holding still. Holding still. Yes, it's doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. um, I later found out, so here's the word for, that made it in English as the woman's name of Irene. And... Uh, I, we might hear the word Irenic or Irenic. Irenaeus. Well, that's, that's another name, but I'm thinking of like peaceful, quiet, solitude in a forest. It's so Irenic, you know, Irenic, oh, you know oh. very peaceful. That's kind of another uh, English word that came from here. Irene, uh, which means peace. And it was originally... Yet again, another goddess. It was the Greek goddess of peace. So we've had the Greek goddess of the underworld, and now we've got the Greek goddess of, of peace. And these things, oh, and Nike, which is the Greek goddess of victory, a Greek god of victory. And so we, uh, goddess, pardon me, uh, because it's a feminine ending. 
so we have these Greek, uh, in the archaic Greek, we have these Greek goddesses and gods that appear. By the time they get to Koine Greek uh, and Rome is in charge, uh, they start morphing to what they were a goddess of, the underworld, victory, peace. But if you were going to look uh, in uh, ancient, really ancient Greek, uh, you would have to do, uh, you have to think and say, are they talking about the, um, the adjective, peaceful, or are they talking about the goddess? Ek means out. 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 And uh, Kletas uh, is uh, called. Uh, oh. So called out. And we have made it into Spanish as Ecclesia. And you, uh, these are, so this is a word I mentioned like maybe the first lesson. Uh, you'll be seeing me reuse words. And as you get through here, you go, wait, I've heard that word before. It's another part of how to anchor these words is repetition. Mm -hmm. So uh, one method was, you know, cover up the paper and just try to follow through. But you'll start seeing uh, familiar words uh, repeated. You go, oh, Harry's doing that so I can remember it. <laughs> Ecclesia. Um, I remember someplace I learned where the word church got introduced uh, as the, because it has nothing really to do with ecclesia, called out ones. It, is that German? I don't know the etymology of it, but the German word is kirche. It says it's uh, from Proto-Germanic, Saxon, Norse, Frisian, Middle Dutch, and <laughs> German, so Northern Europe. Whenever you see the word pist, pistis, pistas, pisteos, pisteos, pardon me, uh, it all has to do something with faith. So um, it's, it's, a, it's an adjective. So pistas means to be faithful, but it's a noun, os, so a faithful what? And so you would have to put in parentheses the word one, until you've got your entire sentence run together and you can say, oh, they're talking about the faithful disciples. Oh, they're talking about a faithful uh, servant. Um, uh, so when you're making your wooden translation, when you've got these adjectives, you, you would put the word one in parentheses. Uh, pistos, faithful one. Pistis is just simply faith. We're moving into some words that are just going to require you to just practice. There's no way around it. Uh, you just have to say, pistos means faithful, or pistis means faith. Pist, P-I-S-T, something about faith. And we're looking at body parts. Many of them made it into English. So, for instance, the body itself is soma. It's an omega, long O, soma, from which we get the word psychosomatic. It means the body. And suke, which is right there uh, that uh, Maura was talking about, uh, soki, pardon me, means uh, the soul. And so suke somatic means uh, some sort of illness that's caused by um, an illness of my, of my spirit or my soul, and it's affecting the body. Uh, two Greek words slammed together, made it into English, but soma, body. Suke, the soul. The stuff that's covering my body, my soma, is derma, where we get dermatology, which is logos means what? Uh, words about? Words about my skin, dermatology, right. So derma, skin. How so, about epidermis? Epidermis, yeah. yeah. Now, since you know those, that's a preposition, what is an epidermis? On the skin. The word that we use for bones, which is skeleton, um, only appears one time in the New Testament. So this is not a word you'll, you'll have to uh, 
worry about running into. It only appears in John chapter 19, and that's where they go to break the legs of the thieves that are on the cross. Uh, but it's skelos, and instead of the word meaning all the bones of the body, it just means the leg. Skelos, leg. Uh, pus means foot or feet. Um, and the closest I can help you with it is the word pod, P-O-D, which is also Greek um, root meaning foot. And so we have uh, podiatry, uh, a foot doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. But pus and pod are uh, synonyms. They're, uh, as far as I can tell, they're interchangeable. They just mean feet. I'm going to scoot up over here to the lion's mouth. The mouth is an opening, and it is a stoma, hmm. from which we get the word stomach. But over here, their actual stomach is called a stomachos, <laughs> which is, I guess, is another kind of thought of an opening. It's a big, you know, big opening for digesting food. But a stoma in both of these places is, is, is a stoma by itself is the mouth. Stomachos, the OS, is a noun. And so it, it really, it translated right into English as stomach. Stomachos. Stoma, however, is just, the, uh, is just the mouth. And inside the mouth is a tongue. <laughs> and that word is glossa, uh, which can mean either the physical tongue itself, or it might be the language of a people group. Uh, it shows up in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and the word that we use in English is glossolalia, uh, but it's, uh, the Greek word is just simply glossa, glossa. And you have to figure out context. Is, is he talking about the real literal tongue, or is he talking about a language, glossa? Let's see. Who did I leave off? Okay. Um, Lions don't have hands, but I had no other choice here. So keteros is a memory word. There's no helpers. You just have to memorize it. It means hand, and it shows up uh, much more often than foot. Um, but hand, keteros. The mm -hmm. OS tells you it's a what? Um. Noun. Noun. Very good. Masculine noun. It's a masculine noun. Very good. Yes, that's right, but Ma. Right. And, masculine noun. And it's singular. Yeah. So yeah. we're talking about one hand. <laughs> so here's a word that you probably know because you go to an ophthalmologist. Have your eyes checked. Ophthalmos. Os is a noun. It's singular. Masculine is the word I. Ophthalmos. What if I wanted to talk about both eyes? What would be the ending? Ophthalmi. Uh, that would or be my, a Ophthalmi. How do you pronounce it? In I. Oh, ophthalmi. Oi. 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 Okay. Oi. Yes. Oi. Oi. Yes. Oi. Yeah, right. Oi. Which then now you're talking about uh, two or more eyeballs. Um, ophthalmoi. And so keroi would be more than one hand. Um, but ophthalmos is a single eye. And it's where we uh, get ophthalmology. It's, I don't see a connection between it and opsis or optic. Uh, there's got to be a link there somehow. Uh, but there really are two different roots. So ophthalmos is talking about a physical eye. Opsis or optic is more of talking about what the eye does. It sees things. It's, and so you say, oh, the optics of this is bad. Uh, mm -hmm. It means uh, the actual interpretation of what the eye see is bad. Um, this is supposed to be pointing to an ear, but I don't have an ear on my lion. The hearing part uh, is called a koi. And that's where we get the word acoustic. So you, if you're uh, in uh, 
uh, the sound uh, technology, you say, what are the acoustic properties of this guitar? Or what are the acoustic properties of this um, room? Uh, that's a Greek word, akoui, mm -hmm. uh, the hearing part. If I'm just talking about the physical flap of skin, then uh, the word is oos, uh, mm. meaning ear. It's kind of like poos, poos for foot, oos for ears. Um, if I'm doing something with the foot, it'd be pod, like I'm, I'm walking. If I'm doing something with this flap of skin on the side of my head, then I'm hearing it'd be a kui. Hmm. Harry, that's incredible. What? This is so much fun. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard this stuff before. <laughs> Just wait, you know, you can use some of these in your sermons and people will go, I know where he got that from. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is a one-time word. You'll, you'll never run into it except in 1 Corinthians uh, 12. It's talking about the parts of the body, and it says if everyone's a nose, you know, if everyone was an ear, where would the smelling come from? And mm -hmm. this is that word, ophrisis. Um, it's the only place you'll see it. So huh. if, if, I'll give you uh, credit for not having to memorize this word, but it's the, it's the, uh, it's the smeller part. It's the smeller. <laughs> they don't call it a nose. It's the smelling part. So that's why when you see it in first Corinthians 12, well, it says, well, where, where would the smelling be? Right? Exactly. So up in this corner, here is an anglicized Greek words. Can you tell me what the, these three words say? It's a phrase. Words, about Words of the lion. Very good. Who else besides Kent got that? I did. Okay, yeah. Logoi, plural, more than one, of the lion of, right. Words of the lion. Super. Here are the words themselves. Um, how am I... Normally, I would, I, would, uh, I would cover this up and just use, I uh, would point it in my class. I would point and say, okay, what's that word? But it's on, the sh it's on the sheet of paper, so you guys can cheat. I don't know. Can you cover up half of your screen there? Um, I'll just ask. A koi means? A hearing. Right. Derma. In. Glosa. Tongue. Now, are you cheating? You're looking at the paper? No, I'm, I'm not cheating. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kefali, that is an L-E, by the way. Kefali? Head. Yeah. Head. Oops. Keroi. I'm fooling you. Keroi. If it's got an O-I ending, it means? Hands. Hands, yeah. Osphrasis. Anyone else? Osphrasis. Ophrisis. Like a hole in the head. <laughs> what? Well, Where'd... you know how when you got bumps on your head, it's um, phrenology. Oh, really? And os means an opening. So oh. maybe it's a, a, either a bump on your head. <laughs> or, or a hole in my head. In head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that is too rich. I love it. Yeah, yeah, both both my ear and my nose. Yeah, I've got a hole in my head. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay. Uh, oos. You know, Harry, what was, I don't, you know, you got oos and you got poos. Right. Ear and feet. And that's really interesting how those could be so closely aligned, those words. Right. There's something there, but we, we are not going to be able to get in contact with it. And it's one of those things where you go, hmm, I think I'm going to make a research project till midnight tonight, figuring that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave one of you to go figure that out. If oos and poos, <laughs> how are they related? Yeah. Uh, once again, the oos is not the actual hearing, but it's just talking about the physical flap of skin. Ophthalmos. Skin. Oh, say again. Skin. That would be derma. 
Oh, dermi, right. Okay. Ophthalmology. Think of ophthalmology. Oh, I. That's I the eye. eye. I'm going to fool you. Podoi? Oi? What would that be? Feet. Feet. More than one Feet. foot. Yep. Uh, we did poos already. Uh, skelos. Bones? A uh, particular bone. Oh, oh, that's head. The... It's, it'd be uh, a leg. Oh, the leg. Oh. Yeah. So if any, I, uh, what would be the, what would be the, what would be the plural if I wanted to say, I want to break both their legs? Skeloi. Yep, skeloi. Wow, who said that? Pat? I remember things oh, for a Mara. few seconds. That was, that's fabulous. You got that plural. What were you going to say, Mara? I'll remember it for a few seconds, but next week I won't remember. It could also be for arm or just uh, the leg limb, no other limbs? As far as I know, it only gets translated as leg. Um, stomachos? Stomach. Yep. Stoma? Tongue. Close. Mouth. Oh, mouth. Yeah. What would be the word for tongue? It's not, it, yeah, yeah, it is here. Uh, no. You're almost there. I heard someone trying to say it. Word for tongue. I try to say the wrong word. Oh, oh me. Glo glosa. Glosa. Very oh, good. Oh, quite good, David. Yes. <laughs> Soma. Psychosomatic. Body. Body. And suke. Where we get the word psychology. The mind. Person or the soul. More, yeah, it's, yep. Mm -hmm. we, it could, it, uh, we could be mind because of, you know, psychology, but it's really the, the part of us that's the real else, self. You know, a, a medical person is going to look at our physical soma and they are going to, you know, make sure it's healthy. But a psychologist is looking at something different than our soma. They're looking at our suke. They're looking at what is uh, the real us. Uh, and uh, so these these two words will show up quite a bit. And then pneuma, which is spirit, is usually referencing to God's spirit impacting us as humans. I wish that my Greek professors that I had for six years <laughs> Uh, had approached it like you did. Well, it would have been made it a lot easier and a lot more fun. I want to thank you, Harry. You're welcome. It's it becomes it's just brute force when you don't know some of these ticks, trips, tick, ticks and tricks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna have to get my tongue, my glossa out of my mouth. The word for when something appears only once in the whole Bible. Hapox legomena. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> That's good, Mara. The words are still words that you know, or at least you've heard the um, uh, synonyms on. So the uh, uh, one of the first words is the word agriculture itself it comes from. Uh, a Greek word. <laughs> At this point, you should not be surprised. Everything is from the Greek, right? <laughs> and uh, the, um, uh, so it's agros, and it means a field. Yeah. And, and uh, what you uh, grow in that field would be wheat or barley, and you would then you, uh, make artos out of it, which is bread. Think of artesian bread. It might help you remember that bread means, uh, artos means bread. Agriculture, agros, artesian, artos, bread. Dendros is kind of like a botany term, but we also know it in terms of our brain neurons have dendrons on them. Uh, so these are the little, um, the root-like things, uh, and, or tree-like structures, is dendros. Um, a 
a, a plant uh, that flowers is called a rhododendron, uh, which comes right out of the Greek. Not every, uh, David already noticed that not everything on this list is, a, is agriculture, but I have to put a house and a door in here. So here's a door, uh, thura, and think of the word thoroughfare. Uh, thura is, is a door. On your ranch, you might have some hippopotamus, I mean hippos, which are horses. <laughs> So a, uh, uh, a, the hippo is a horse-like item. We think of it today as hippopotamus as being a, uh, an African creature in the water. And indeed, uh, the word hippopotamus, let me go ahead and get down and do a spoiler alert here. Hippo uh, means horse and potamus means river. So hippopotamus is a river horse or a horse that ah. likes to be in the river. But just plain old hippos, hippos is, uh, is a horse. And so in Roman times, they had hippodromes, uh, where it was the racetrack that they, they raced horses around and chariots around in, a hippodrome. If you went to Greece today, modern Greece, and you asked for some fruit, you would ask for fruta, which is, I think, English uh, crammed backwards back into Greece. And that's what they call it uh, modern day as fruta. But in, uh, um, in Koine, uh, fruit like an apple or a pear or fruit of one's labor uh, is karpos, karpos. No shorthand around it. You just have, it's a, uh, it's a memory word. Karpos means fruit. The next two are also memory words, oikos, which is a house, and oinos, which is wine. So you would drink oinos in an oikos. There's a little bit of a rhyme here, a wine in the house, or karpas in an oikos, karpas in the house. I'm already making fra uh, Greek phrases here. En means what? In, yeah. So, yep. What if I want to say the house? What word would I use? It'd be ho. Oh, oh well. Ho. Oh. oh, the house. The house. I was aiming for the word the. Um, potos is uh, before we get the word potable. It's, in other words, it's drinkable water. A potus was a drinking banquet. And what did they do at this party? They did a lot of drinking. But uh, it made it into English as potable, anything that is uh, drinkable. And uh, potamas is a drinkable river. <laughs> so... That makes it easy to remember that potamus means river, is that it's water that's drinkable. It may not be the Chicago River, but it's a river that is, in those days, it was, you would go to the Jordan River, and it was drinkable water. You could drink right out of the river. The word Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia uh, is rivers, potamus, and meso means between. Uh, this is a new word for you, meso. Uh, so it's between the rivers. So we got uh, a lot of water here. We got some wine in a house. Now we're going to go out in the field and um, uh, sow some seed. And the word in Greek is spermatos. And it's emphasizing the seed. Uh, pardon me, it's emphasizing the sowing. It's something that's sown. So you, uh, whether it's plants or animals, is that's the, the emphasis of spermatos. And in the parable, the wheat and the tares, Matthew 13, 24, which uses this word is emphasizing the fact that some enemy has sown tares into the field of wheat. Uh, if you want to talk about the seed itself, 
uh, not the act of sowing, but just the seed itself, you would use the word sporos, from which we get the word spores. So in the parable of the sower in Luke, he's emphasizing the item sown. So it says a seed fell on some rocky soil, some seed fell on some good soil, some seed fell on the path, uh, some seed fell among some uh, thorns and it choked it. It's talking about the receptivity of uh, the item that's being sown. Um, I don't want to make too big of a deal between these two words, but that is how they're used in the New Testament. Uh, they're, they're, otherwise, they're synonyms with each other. Bios? Yes. Uh, the spermatos, that's for, you say sperm of plants or animals and also right. humans? Yes. So when it says um, uh, the seed of David, it uses that word. Yep, yep, okay. It's kind of an embarrassing if there's uh, underage children nearby. Because <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? You know, yeah. it's not part of our English, but in Greek, that was what they called it. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, the next two words have to are synonyms for life. So bios, from which we get biology, is just simply life in general. It's, you know, functional. The, the thing is alive, you know, the, the horse, the dog, the cat. It's alive, but it's more like bios is just kind of like, you know, biology. It's it's a it's a thing. But if you want to say it's really alive, like you know, in Frankenstein's monster, it lives. You know, that's going to be Zoe. Uh, so uh, Zoe has that sense of that spark of life. Uh, it's not just a, a a lump on the log, but it's it's. It seems to have its own uh, individuality, its own personality. So uh, the dog that greets you when you come home or the, the cat that snuggles on your, lamp, on your lap has this sense of Zoe. It's, it's beyond just merely a functional animal, and it's kind of got a, a personality and traits of its own. And Zoe carries with it that, 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 that divine spark, that image for you. We use the word zoo, uh, as Obnus was uh, noting, uh, zoo and zoology are words about life. Um, not necessarily the fact that they have lungs and a heart and, uh, and, and breathe air, but more of, you know, the whole being as a whole is, is alive. And when it talks about our Christian walk or our walk with Jesus, it has this Zoe part of it. If I'm just an ordinary human, bias. But if there's some um, spark within me, Zoe. Okay. So Zoe, so Zoe doesn't apply to animals then? No, it does. Oh, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here. So it's, if you have a it, smart dog, it would have been able to apply because they have a spark in them. Yeah. So if you come in through the door and your little puppy comes racing towards you, barking and yapping and so glad to see you, that's Zoe. Okay, I didn't bring throw a lot of agriculture at you, but just enough to say, you know, these are, you know, outdoor, uh, except for the uh, house and the door. Uh, these are um, words that uh, you would see in the New Testament because it was an agricultural society. Okay, rocks. <laughs> um, when, when you uh, see the passage in Matthew where Jesus says to Peter, your name is Peter and upon this rock I will build my church, the words that are used are Petros for Peter and, and Petra, uh, meaning the rock that the church is built upon. Uh, as my slide says here, don't try to read too much into this because churches will interpret it differently. But I wanted to show you that there are different sizes of rocks from the very small, which is a cephos. It's like a small gemstone, maybe a stone on a ring or stone that you would put in a, uh, um, 
uh, a cup and rattle around and spill out to uh, toss lots. Um, lithos is uh, kind of like something I can fit in my hand. It's a, it's a stone. Um, it's, 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 it's also translated as rock. Uh, and the word that we use in English, uh, if you're in the printing arts, is called lithography. And that's essentially a flat rock that's been etched with acid, uh, covered with ink, and you put then uh, a piece of paper over it, run your roll over it, and then you get an impression uh, that's uh, called rock writing, lithography. Harry, don't they sometimes render Peter as Cephas or Cephas or something like that? Cephas would have been his given name. Cephas would have been his given name. But Simon. Is it different from the small stone? You know, so I'm saying this again. Is it different from the small stone? Yes, the small stone is Cephas. If you find Peter in the, in the New Testament, uh, you're, just, you're just seeing the word Petros. And it, it's, it's bigger. It can't fit in your hand. It's kind of like a boulder. Big, you know, big chunk of a rock is, is Petros. And Petra is the biggest of it all. You might think of Petra as like a bedrock uh, um, or just super massive of which uh, Petros is a chunk of that massive rock. Okay, so uh, petroleum is Petro uh, means uh, rock and Oleum is oil, so petroleum is rock oil. So it's a modern uh, word using Greek. Are these all the same gender? Uh, Petros, Lethos, and Cephas are. Um, uh, I don't know what to make of Petra. Okay. Now we're going to get into some more complicated words. Things about documents. So, um, we sometimes call the book of Revelations the Apocalypse. And it comes from the Greek um, preposition apo, which means? Away. Away from. And uh, another word uh, that, another Greek word is kalup toe, which means I hide or I cover. So apocalypto is I uncover, and apocalypsis is something that has been uncovered. Hence, uh, think of a cooking pot and the lid's been removed. Uh, that made it into English as something has been revealed. You're going to find out what you're going to have for dinner. Uh, apo then makes the word uh, go the opposite direction. This means poop. it's away from the lids removed from the cooking pot and we get to see what's been revealed for dinner and uh, that's why uh, we call that genre of, of documentation apocalyptic if you know your Spanish uh, biblioteca is a library uh, in English, a bibliography is writing about uh, books. So a bibliography in the back of a book is a listing of a whole bunch of books that are about the, the same topic. And that comes from the Greek word biblos, biblios, or biblion. Uh, biblios is what we'll be focusing on, and it just means book. And so when we talk about our Bible, we say, does everyone have their Bible today? What the pastor is really saying is, do you have your books with you? <laughs> if you're in the uh, Eastern Orthodox, they have lots of icons, uh, flat panels of drawings of saints and angels and uh, 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 images of, of st uh, stories in the Bible. Those icons uh, is right out of the Greek, icon, icon, and it just means an image or, or a reflection. So if I want to go ahead and destroy those, someone would say, you're being iconoclastic. 
eschatos uh, sounds uh, like a theological word, but if you think about the word scat, that came right out of the Greek, that's, you know, poop. You know, it's, it's what's the leavings of an animal is scat, and eschatos means last. So eschatology, logos means what? Word. Word. Words about last things. Eschatology. Eschatos. Last. Writings just by themselves is grama. And it's from which we get the word grammar or grammatical. Um, we mean, today, meaning uh, are we speaking our grammar properly with our verbs and nouns. But in Greek, the word grama just simply means writings. A synonym of grama is graftos. We see the word graph and we immediately think of an XY diagram with a, uh, with a line on it. Uh, a graftos was rarely a drawing. A drawing would tend to be an icon. Graftos was merely written text. Uh, it'll, it'll show up oddly in the next word here. So, graphi or graphi is, uh, shows up in the New Testament as scripture. We get the English word graphic, or we could say a photograph. Photo means light. Graph is written text. So, a photograph is written text about light. And... If you look at a photograph, you go, oh, yes, okay, it's a, uh, an image on a piece of paper uh, that went through the camera as light, and it's now interpreted on this piece of paper. Another cinnamon, synonym uh, is uh, graphias hagias. Once again, you get the graph in here again, which means something that's right, written. Hagias or hagios means... Holy. Holy. So, Graphias Hagios is holy documents. It's used in Romans to refer to the holy scriptures, the holy documents, the holy written text. They can even flip it around and use a different word instead of Hagios called Hera, which means sacred. And they use the word Gramata. So, it's using this word up here, Grama, which means writings. Heragramata, sacred writings, and it also gets translated as holy scriptures. So whether it's gramata or graftas or graphis or graphi or graphi, it's still written text. And if it's got hagias in the, in hiding in there, that means it's holy. If it's got hera, it means it's sacred. Um, but there are all of these terms are synonyms that you'll find in the New Testament and don't get thrown by the say, well, I thought a document was always graftus or I always thought it was grammata. It's, they're synonyms. Criterion is a rule for judging uh, and often it's written down. So that's how it got on this list. But a criterion is, is a rule, a rule for judging. Um, here's a sister word that looks like there's an L-O-G, so you're thinking, ah, it's a word about something, but it's all one word together, logic os. So the os ending is the noun, but logic, logic, L-O-G-I-K, is really the, the root rather than log, logic, and it made it into English, surprise, surprise, as logic. And um, we translate it as reasonable or rational. But there's one verse in the Bible, which, it, which is, if I used it to mean logical, it takes this sentence and really amps it up uh, in the book of Romans. Uh, we are told to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. 
and it makes this parenthetical comment, which is your reasonable service or your rational service or your holy service, it would have been better if they just took it right out of the Greek and said, this is your logical service. Um, it says, uh, why should I present my Bible, uh, my uh, body as a living sacrifice? Well, because of the previous uh, part of chapter 12, it's, it's giving you a, a thesis, and, and this is the therefore statement. Therefore, <laughs> it's logical and reasonable and rational to present your body as a living sacrifice. Uh, and the word there is logikos. Harry, I know you're from IT. Uh, people use the phrase in that industry, logical device. Yes. To mean like a physical um, computing device. What's the connection? Do you know? Okay, so uh, uh, a logic device is an on-off switch uh, with AND and NOR gates in computers. Uh, pardon me, AND, NAND, OR, and NOR gates. And you put those together and you say, if I uh, link up zeros and ones, I will get a, a result based on these, uh, uh, on my starting position. Uh, and so it's based on logic. So it says, if a one and one, then uh, if I've got truth and truth, then the result will be truth. If I have uh, false and false or zero and zero, I'm gonna get zero. And if I've got a truth and a falsehood, I'm gonna get different answers based on the logic that I've built. And so that's why they call them logic devices uh, because of mathematical logic. A, a, a piece of plastic is not rational. It's just a piece of plastic, right? <laughs> uh, so logic devices are based on the fact that they've encoded logic into that piece of plastic. Good question. Namas is uh, where we get, uh, is the word for law. This is a memory word. You'll just have to memorize it. It does show up in the book of Deuteronomy, which is the Greek word for the Old Testament book. Uh, from the, uh, Harry, uh, yes. What about autonomy derived from Greek? Auto definitely, which means self. I have to go check to see if namas is part of that. I think it means you make your own law. Thank you for giving me an English word that might use it. Um, Deuteronomy is the only one I had when I built this, this list, which is the second giving of the law. Deutero or Deuteros means second nomos law, second law. And um, uh, you have to stick the word giving of in there to make oh. it make sense. So somebody named Euronymous, like Euronymous Bosch, is a uh, holy law? What's the first part? H-I-E-R. There's a... Uh, oh, that means sacred. Yeah. Oh, sacred. That's right. There's an yeah. artist called Hier or Hieronymous Bosch. So he's. It, this is like uh, someone named their kid that? Yeah. Poor guy. But it's a good thing, yeah, holy law, uh, because it's two Greek words slammed together. Uh, the next word is two Greeks, uh, words to get, uh, Greek parts thrown together. Para is a what? The long side. The side. Yes, and it's what, uh, what part of speech is it? Preposition. Preposition, right. And then boli is uh, uh, to throw. Um, so para boli is a, makes it into English as parable. And it's a story that gets thrown alongside uh, a truth. Uh, previously we talked about diabolos, which is the word for devil, you know, through throwing something at you. Well, parabolus is, uh, is, is this parable or parabole. Uh, this is the uh, feminine ending with a, a long E at the end of it. Um, 
is is just made it into untranslated into the New Testament. Here's a word that is just loaded with um, subunits, many of which we have already covered before. So let's uh, it's pro epangelomai, but let's break it down a little slower. Pro is a proposition meaning. Before, front of. Bef before or in front, front of. of. Epi. On. Upon. Right. Upon, yep. On top of the lion. Onkelos. Messenger. Message. Message, right? Message. Or an angel, right? Messenger, oh, right? And then, oh my, is something new to you. Uh, this is a verb form, and it means either... Um, I'm acting upon something or something acting upon me. Uh, and in this case, it's something that's acting upon me. It's a, uh, it's a promise. So uh, pro, before, epi, upon, onkelos, message. A before, upon, message. You would not get this to mean the word promise, which is the actual translation. But by breaking it apart, you can say, Oh, wait a minute. It's not just a, um, a promise that's been tossed off out of hand without thought. Uh, this is a promise that was made a long time ago. And uh, so it's, it's got this sense of endurance. And you would only get that uh, uh, image of endurance because you know pro it means before. So uh, some... Some time ago, I told you something, and now it is today, and the and I'm I'm still holding to that that promise. So it's uh, has a sense of endurance. Pro epangelomai. Now you'll probably just have to memorize it. That means promise. But I wanted to show that uh, if you find a word that you've never seen before, you can break it into pieces and tease out that there's something about a message. And it's a message that's affecting me. That's the oh my. Oh my. And then, uh, and pro means it's happened before time. So, hmm. Some message that was given to me before time. Uh, you go to the dictionary, you see the word, oh, it means promise. And then the things click. But uh, a little trick of the trade. Go ahead. Can I ask a question before we move on? Yes. When we were on... Grafais Hagais, the way it's spelled Oops, seems sorry. Like it was different from the way you said it. Grafias Hagias? Yeah, the way you say it, it sounds like you have the I before the A. Grafias. Grafias. I didn't know which it's, was correct. Grafias. You know what? It is a diphthong. It's an AI diphthong, so maybe I'm putting. Uh, uh, emphasizing the ah, and I shouldn't be doing that. Let me see if I can try it again. Grafis, graf, grafis, hagais. Maybe that'll be the better way of doing it. Grafis, hagais. Maybe that'll work because grafi, right up here. Whoops, come back here. Right there. That's ah. that's clearly a, a diphthong AI. So grafi, grafi. So grafis, hagais. Oh, okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. Yep, you caught me. Good job. This e, long e on the end, tells you it's a feminine form, and os is a masculine form. Is there anything else I can show here? Oh, so os is is a masculine noun. O-N is also a masculine noun, but it's usually the uh, object. Something's being done to it. So Biblos is the book said something. Biblon says, I opened the book. Once again, it's just the words that are. There's uh, masculine and feminine. Doesn't really hold much water. It's just what the word happens to be. Okay, we have a little quiz here. Here. A door. 
Thura. Thura, right. And uh, this animal. Hippo. Hippos. 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 Oh, it's an OS ending. Os, os. Hippos. Uh huh. This is, might be a little bit tricky. This could be uh, several words, actually. Polis? Polis is one, yes. What else could it be? Laws. Say again? Laws. Yeah, oh. That's, uh, I guess no. that's a smaller community. Law, that's law. a small, yeah. So yeah, you need so to get something like big bigger. City. It's got to be bigger. Polis is probably better for it. I'm thinking of the word um, uh, cosmos. Which is the world of the world of the city or cosmopolitan, but yeah, polis would work. How about this one down here? No. Say again. No. Namas. Uh huh. And the house. Oikos. Very good. The tree. Endros. Very good. I think rhododendron, that's the only way I, uh, I can remember it. Uh, when we look at the universe with the sun, moon, stars, and the planets, it is a... Is that the cosmos? That would be cosmos. Mm -hmm. okay. So normally we think of cosmos in, uh, in the New Testament as just simply the world, the local world that we can see. But it can also include everything else. I'll throw a freebie word out here. The planets that are uh, wandering in the sky, usually stars are fixed, but the planets tend to, uh, let me get my hand in the camera, the planets tend to move uh, the moon and the um, Saturn and Venus and Uranus, for instance, are all moving. And the Greek word for that is planetos, from which we get the word planet. <laughs> And planetos uh, translated means wandering star. How about this right in here? Necropolis. Necropolis, yes. And one last one. Biblion. Biblion or? Biblios. Biblios, uh-huh. Very good. Or it could be Lagos if it said scripture on it somewhere, right? No, that's the wrong thing too. It's um Yeah, if if it had if it had scriptural writing on it, if you know it said for God so loved the world, then you might want to use one of the other words, yes. But just a book a book by itself is Biblos. <laughs>